Ghouls and bodies, welcome to the Spodcast. As you can probably tell, we're doing a Halloween-themed night. We're also going to be talking about what happened at the Expo in London today. But first, we have some shout-outs to give out. First of all, we would like to unfortunately say that our dear friend Alice has flown the coop, or retired temporarily. Uh, she's currently now wor- uh, working on a project in the Nano Nano Re Mo writing competition, where she's writing a novel. Where she's writing a novel in a month. Her novel is Clockwork Boy, and her tag and her tag is Apple Napoleon. So please check that out because it is awesome stuff. We'd also like to uh, give a shout out to a friend of ours. Kerry Louise, who is currently working on her f- first couple of singles, and will be including uh, links to her sound cl- SoundCloud or and her website in the description. So please check those people out because they are awesome. Anyway, welcome to the show, everybody. We'd like to welcome with us tonight Charles and myself, Joe. I'm a ghost. <laughs> yes, you are. And you're a vampire. Avam to suck your blood. Anyway. <laughs> yes. London MCM Expo. Uh, Charles, you didn't manage to make it down there because of the fact you're up in Wrexham. Yep, sorry. Wales is not really close to London, per se. Yeah. Okay, then. But since you were there, would you like to begin... Begins off with what was there in terms of movies, animation, and gaming wise. Well, in terms of the mo- in terms of movies, there was quite a lot of adver- advertisement for stuff. Um, most notably, I most notably there was stuff for uh, the re- stuff. In really, just let me get my notes out here because I took comprehensive notes. I've learned from you. Um, hey, I'm awesome that way. Yes. Uh, multiple, multiple movies in, on offer. One of them was uh, Cockneys vs. Zombies, which looks like it's set in a sort of London, retire- London retirement home, and then zombies invade. So that, As you do. That looks interesting. Uh, oh, no, wait a minute. My mistake. It's not just co- uh, retirement home. It's also sort of uh, gang- Cockney gangsters. So it essentially sounds like it's uh, Guy, Guy Ritchie's Snatch meets Shaun of the Dead. That could be interesting. There's also it quite, could. yeah. There were quite a, also quite a lot of adver- uh, advertisements for um, Lim- the new uh, Limazarabra movie, with uh, Hugh Jackman, Russell Crowe, and mm. Hathaway, Amanda Siegfried, Eddie Redmayne, Helen Bottom Carter, Carter, and Sachin Barra Cohen. Yep. Uh, the- well, as excited as anyone would be, given the amount of content in the actual books and theatre and trying to condense it into film form now. <laughs> mm. There's also advertisements for um, uh, Silent Hill Revelations, so that was interesting. Uh, yeah. There's also some stuff for uh, just little sneak peeks for um, uh, movies for next year, including Man of Steel, Thor The Dark World, Iron Man 3, Kick-Ass 2, and Star Trek Journey Into Darkness. And oh! yes, we liked this movie, so we had another. <laughs> the um, yeah, but there was also quite a lot in terms of um, TV shows as well. Most notably, there was uh, stuff for Doctor Who, which is because Matt Smith was down there. I unfortunately missed him, so I didn't get to ask him if he'd uh, allow me to sort of touch his chin or something. But there was also stuff for Continuum. There was uh, stuff for Once Upon a Time, which actually looks quite interesting. It looks like it's sort of a uh, sort of historical drama, but it's also but all the characters are sort of uh, members of various uh, grim te- Grimm's tales. Uh, there's also Eureka, which looks like it's uh, sort of a bunch of geeks set on a, uh, on a spaceship. Uh, there's Hunted, which basically looks like Taken the TV series. Space Milkshake, which I don't know what to make of this, if I'm honest. Uh, there's 
Haven, which uh, looks like it's a sort of murder mystery sort of thing. And funny, there's also there's obviously the more stuff from The Walking Dead, which is a great, great TV show and a great comic series. Oh, in terms of games, there was stuff advertised for uh, XCOM. There was stuff advertised for um, New Wii U. Massive queue for that one. There was uh, stuff advertised for Halo 4. There was stuff advertised for uh, so- uh, Metal Gear Solid Rising. But um, one uh, an additional shout-out I'd like to give to is a uh, game called Foul Play. I'll be linking the uh, website to that later on and I just love it because it's a really interesting idea. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up but it's set in a sort of steampunk theatre and what you have to do is you have a audience in the theatre and you have to basically entertain them whilst you're going around beating up various ne'er-do-wells. So I thought that was very interesting in terms of gaming. Um, yeah. In terms of uh, anime and animation stuff uh, there was sort of the general lot of uh, stuff from Viz Media. There was uh, also some in- interesting stuff. There was a uh, oh, they're doing a new Zone of the Enders, which might be quite interesting to see. Um, nothing in terms of Western animation, unfortunately, which is a great shame because I would have loved to sort of get a world exclusive. Would have loved to get the world exclusive on something awesome down there, but Celavi. Uh, yes. <coughs> so that's about it when it comes to uh, content. Oh, there was. There was also some stuff from various web series, which was quite interesting. Like, um, uh, Tom Scar had a uh, stand down there. There was uh, stuff from uh, Red. Ver- there was stuff from Red vs. Blue. Yeah, Rooster Teeth managed to get a stall down there. It was, I think, it was Gavin and Jeff, and I can't remember who else, but yeah, that was awesome. There was also. Uh, a whole bunch of other, there was a whole bunch of other stuff. There was um, uh, a couple of new, uh, there was a couple of uh, web, uh, web series stuff like the Underwater Realm, or um, the Bloody Mary show, which was that, which were down there. So that looked very, that looked sort of interesting stuff. Uh, didn't manage to get a chat chat with them unfortunately, but oh well, what can you do? So yes, that was what on, was on the X. That was what was on the expo floor in terms of content. But what was interesting in was uh, also interesting is the fact that we managed to uh, meet a couple of the celebrities. One of the guests down there was uh, Warwick Davis, and uh, a friend of mine managed to fulfil his lifelong passion of meeting him. <laughs> yeah. So that's one dream con- succeeded. Anyway. Anyway, oh, yes. Yeah. Fulfilling each dream at a time. <laughs> So, yeah, quite extensive stuff, then. Very. Also one, one, also one thing which was quite interesting is the fact that the actual... Um, uh, there was a, uh, oh, there was also advertisement for um, the new uh, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost movie called The World's End, which has been uh, described as a pub crawl to the end of the universe. Which sounds epic. <laughs> and there's also stuff for... Um, there was also stuff for. Uh, there was also something about the. Mem- there was also the memorabilia, the big memorabilia section they usually have down there. That actually got has shrunken down quite a bit, and the new, new now the convention space was sort of opened up all the whole section, a, a huge section over next, over next door. So yeah, much much a grander space, and even then you couldn't move a couple of inches without bumping into someone. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> quite extensive reporting. What do you think of that then? I think I'm actually jealous I did not go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But uh, speak, speaking of being there, I'm dying to know what were you cosplaying as? I was cosplaying as Co- Ghost Rider with a cowboy hat. There was a whole bunch of us, including Alice and Lizzie, who went down, and Tom, who went down there as various Avengers characters. And so yeah, we had a good time, time there. There was a whole bunch of Avengers cosplay actu- cosplayers actually, and so yeah, 
while I was bored during the lines, I actually... They're really st- popular, haven't they? Yeah. Well, it's the movies. It's probably the movies, but yeah. Whilst I was done, we had managed to get a big meetup of sort of quite a few Avengers cosplayers, and uh, I managed to get some pit- pictures, which I'll probably be showing now. But also, while I was down there, I decided to play um, cosplay bingo. Now, if you've never played this, something I recommend if you're bored waiting in the line for the convention to start. What you do is you get uh, put up a bingo board and write down your a favorite uh, sort of series which you want to do cosplay bit bingo with something sort of fairly recent or something fairly sort of popular. So I've done with um, MLP and Adventure Time, and you put the names of the main characters in the bingo board, and every time you see one, you cross one off. Uh, okay. you might, You've got. I managed to get um, a couple of ones for MLP and uh, one or two for um, Adventure Time. There was a BMO cosplayer who was epic enough to um, allow us to take allow me to take a picture of them. Uh, I also put up a. I also managed to find a few Slenderman co- cosplayers, but strangely, the yes. photos haven't exactly come out in the best shape. Oh yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I also started. A, not like being photographed. Yeah. I also started a uh, Deadpool count and a Harley Quinn count because they're very, very popular cosplays. And, yeah, <laughs> the Deadpool count got up to about nine, nine-ish. I saw about nine Deadpools. I saw about 16 Harley Quinn cosplayers. <laughs> I know she's a popular character, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, it was all sorts of awesome stuff down there. But yeah, it was absolutely one absolutely wonderful. Um I think the best co- one of the best cosplays I saw was actually a um person who was cosplaying as the thing. Uh the thing from Fantastic Four, so that was quite cool. Uh another good one was um there was this one who, who was po- probably part of a uh, D&D group because I saw a whole load of uh, people dressed up in sort of various D&D outfits. And it was this guy who sort of had this uh, turban, a fully functioning crossbow and this huge array of arrows in the back and he was walking on wooden clogs. And so whenever you whenever you sort of heard this tap, tap, tap sound, you thought, I know who's coming, get out of the way. Ah, oh, it was wonderful. Yeah. Anything else you want to ask me? Or be sat there in fuming <laughs> jealousy? Oh, uh, um, what did you buy? Assuming you still had money left <laughs> from going to London. I bought lots of comics. To my shame, oh, I bought... Yeah. I... Yeah. <laughs> I bought lots and lots of comic stuff, but it was pretty damn awesome, the stuff I did buy. I bought, um... Uh, Astro City Family Time, which is a great sort of volume of stuff to read. I always love Astro City stuff. But yeah, um, Astro City stuff. It's just a really, really nice comprehensive universe and really, really rich and detailed characters. I also bought the last, um, or the sort of most recent Hellboy, the the Storm and the Fury. They destroy England in it. Yeah. There is a massive battle and l- lightning and thunder and things blow up and English people blow up and it's awesome. There's this huge war between the Knights of the Round Table and the de- noble dead of Britain against all the fairy kind. It's yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I also bought uh, volumes one to four of the Runaways, which I won't tell a lie. I was surprised at. Um, I'm just trying to think what else I bought. Um, uh, oh yes, I also bought um, Adam Warren's Empowered, which is sort of fairly. In, it's sort of it's all right stuff. I know people have sort of been going on about how it's a big, deep deconstruction of um, uh, feminist super, uh, feminine female superheroes and how skimpy their outfits are and so on and so forth. But it's yeah, I've found it okay so far. Yeah. One of the things which I have got... Let me see. Yeah. 
One of the things which I did get, which was awesome, was uh, the first volume of the new Animal Man series. Uh, if you remember, sort of a while back, DC did uh, a reboot of all their all their uh, intellectual property. So uh, Superman has got had a new fir- first issue, Batman a new first issue, a couple of, so of them have changed origins and so on and so forth. But Animal Man, they kept fairly the same. And it's sort of, you know how you love the sort of little shorts, the Animal Man yes. shorts? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, sort of, Animal Man! Sort of, <laughs> yeah. This series is dark! <laughs> this series is very, very dark. Sort of, sort of strange Lovecraftian horrors kind of dark. That's to the point where it, uh, the first sort of the first five pages in, he start animal Ma- Buddy Baker starts bleeding from his eyes. <laughs> yeah, that. That's creepy, and it only gets worse as you read it. it. Oh my god, it's it's brilliant though. It's so much fun to read, but it's such a change of change of tone from the Animal Man cartoons, and even from the Grant Morrison stuff, where Buddy Baker became self-aware and met Grant Morrison and beat him up. But yeah, it's a really I, I really enjoyed. Really, really had a good time at the expo. That was, it was so awesome. So awesome. Oh, anything else you want to ask me? Hmm. Anything else? Was there something specific there you would like to discuss now or to maybe um, for a later date? Uh, I would like to bring up one gripe. Um, uh, Expo staff members. I, I know you've got a difficult job trying to manage uh, over half a million geeks, sort of all into one place. But if those guys have got the wristbands on, that means that they've paid for their ticket, they've got their ticket scanned, and they're ready to go. They're ready to go in. It doesn't matter that they've stopped off to the side and had a bacon sandwich. They are technically in now. They don't need to wait in the line another time. That just makes me angry. Did you have a tag on you? I did. (laughs) But yes. What else did you get for having a bacon sandwich? (laughs) Damn you! Damn you, bacon. And damn you, morning hunger. But yeah, it was a great, great... I saw all my fr- a whole bunch of sort of friends from the university there, sort of people who I didn't think... who I haven't seen in sort of over a year. And it was great to hang out with them, and it was great to see them. Yeah. I'm just... Oh. And so, yeah. From here on in, it's going to be business as usual. Speaking of endings... Last episode of season one of Spectac- of uh, Ultimate Spider-Man... We've just been watching it, and I think I think the only one who ha- I kind of thought it was okay, nothing spectacular. I'm sure Shal, considering her praise of the series previously, will want to have a few more words about this. So I will hand over to her. For what it is, it does it well. <laughs> but it doesn't mean I still have to like it. Okay. <laughs> so, let's start off with the good points. Um, it wrapped up the story nicely between Doc Ock, Green, uh, Doc Ock, Norman Osborn, and Harry. We got to see all three villains in action, including the Green Goblin, although this is the Ultimate Universe Green Goblin, and thus basically a big green uh, the Hulk part 2 um, it was quite interesting to see uh, Harry's relationship with his dad progress and grow and so on and so forth and uh, yeah that's the good points I can think of also it's quite interesting to see that um, Spidey went back to being a loner for all of one minute <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So yes. Um, do you want to add, add anything to that? Or I like the fact that from the beginning I didn't follow this team in the slightest, but um, by the end of it, you seen Spider-Man is an effective leader. Everyone seems to know their place. And as he constantly keeps saying in the episodes, Peter considered these guys his family now, his best friends, and the things he'll go to not only protect them, but the great lengths he'll go to keep himself distant for them for, as you said, a grand total of one minute. Yeah. So, even after dragging my heels through the dirt, yes, I am finally seeing the t- team forming. <sighs> and, no. of course, ha- and of course, Harry Osborn is still the best character in the show. Yeah. Now let's rip it to shreds. I hate it! Yeah. Okay. What should we start off with first? I think we should probably start off with uh, the unceremonious defeat of Doc, 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 Dr. Octopus. Poor oh, lads. Because it was a brilliant villain. It was a brilliant interpretation of the character. Sort of wonderfully creepy and weird and so on and so forth. And he just ended up getting shafted. I think that was essentially the idea because he started off as this underhand minion who slowly gained his place, his confidence. He had all the tentacle arms and everything. But then those were stripped off him, leaving him bare and, let's face it, not looking so well as this last episode showed us. But, um, yeah, I guess the image they were going for was that he's been stripped down, he's a shadow of him, former self, but just to literally bitch slap him out of the episode it was like, you could have done something better. Yeah. And also there was, um, uh, there was also the fact that it was the ultimate Spider-Man version of the Green Goblin, who is essentially Hulk mm-hmm. 2.0 with lightning powers, so that's Compared to the original, as much as we hate, as I hate to say it, compared to Spectacular Spider-Man, where you had a brilliant Green Go- Green Goblin who was sort of very much a trickster, very much sort of had his whole pumpkin bombs, had all that sort of stuff, and had all that sort of cool, fun, sort of very cackly stuff, a proper goblin rather than a Hulk point two sort of thing, yeah. Well, you don't have to go as far as Spectacular. You can just this Green Goblin to the original source material. What was the Green Goblin? He was this ridiculous co- Halloween costume dressed in a lot of pink, had a woman's handbag which he stored his pumpkin bombs in, and he had and he just flew around on his glider originally a witch's broomstick but we're not going into that. But he had a glider and that was character. He was fun, he was loving, he had various jokes to Spider-Man. Basically, he was kind of like Marvel's version of Joker, that sort of thing, because he definitely had the psycho issue. Um, he, uh, the the Marvelin is a well, a big green monster. Um, he, he starts off very brutish, not very smart, uh, but then he slowly gains intelligence later on to the back, to the point where he gets instantly back to Osborne intelligence level. But you you can see that he's not right in the head, but it's it's not done in that weird comical manner. It's frightening just how how utterly delighted and calm he is. Here it's just uh, he, I think he knows that what he's doing is kind of messed up, but he he just doesn't care. That in in that sense you could say he's not really insane. I'm... He's not the Green Goblin, he's not. Yeah. It is sort of... <laughs> and once, and once again, Nick Fury saves everything on the Shield Harry- Helicarrier as well. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Shield Man, away! Um, yes. Uh, anything else we want to add about how rubbish this is, or...? Well, 
Uh, I'm trying to think of a good one. Otherwise, it's going to just be me nitpicking. Yeah. Uh, again, Harry's good in all this. I was actually hoping they would kind of cling on to the possibility of Harry remaining as a Venom instead of Harry get really angry. Okay. I know they're clearly doing something with his character on. He's clearly hinting in that direction from his last conversation with Spider Man up, but I was kind of hoping they kept the team up for just a bit longer. Yeah. But, oh well. It's, a, it's, a, it's one of those situations where it's kind of an interesting idea, but, yeah. I suppose one of the things they can do now is um, I don't I don't know as a finale it does its job well, but I'm gonna get season two, wasn't it? Yeah, there was definitely gonna be a season two. O series was a bit of a disappointment for me. This series is terrible. Full stop. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, it has had some good moments. I mean, the stuff with Doctor Strange was always awesome because not many people put Doctor Strange in there. The stuff with um, Thor was cool, and the stuff with um, it's one of those ones. So, like, out of the sort of twenty-six episode run, I can think of about four episodes which I enjoyed. But yeah. Uh-huh. For me, it keeps going back to basics. Spider-Man is constantly spouting exposition, and you would think by the season finale, he would stop telling me what S.H.I.E.L.D. is. But the things like the actual team and the fact I wouldn't know a single thing about these other heroes unless I did a quick research on Wikipedia, which is kind of sad that they can't give me this within five minutes of information. Yeah. Oh well. Well, I think we can. Uh... It's such a shame that, that this series has been so bad because of the fact. I don't want to bring back sort of spectacular Spider-Man again, but that was such a fun series. That was such a good, decent, well-rounded series, and it stayed within the Spider-Man mythos, which is big enough already. And this whole idea of expanding out and doing other things with the Spider-Man mythos and going into the Marvel Universe. It, I was really looking forward to it. I think it was a re- would have been sort of people's first taster into stuff from the Marvel Universe. But, yeah. Overall, for me, it's just been a kind of weak, lackluster. Sort of, yeah. For me, it's kind of like I'm with my mind nostalgia goggles. I'm sitting in the old grandpa chair going back in my day. Because I like Spider-Man by himself. I, I like him with his crew, his villains, his world. But the fact is, yes, the world is evolving, it's expanding, and if you're going to introduce Scenic Fury, it has to play a center role. Heroes these days in the modern day can't go off solo because they won't allow it due to legal charges against the property-wise at the very least. It makes perfect sense that you have to put these things in to the and I have to like them. But I, I think it was poorly executed in what they were trying to do. Mm. Yeah. But yes, I think that's a good place to end it. And speaking of endings, I think it's time to end the show. So with that, have a very nice Halloween, everyone. Have a nice night doing whatever you do on the Halloween, sort of doing, uh, going to parties or sort of going out trick-or-treating or anything like that. And we'll see that it's good night from me and it's good night from Charles. And remember, cartoons are no longer child's play. Goodbye. Tweet, tweet. <laughs>